basi wanaopendwa na Kristo wadogo kwa wakubwa mjambo amjambo tena asante sana kwa majina mimi ni Amos Konyokie elda wa kanisa la Naronyo ningependa kuchukua fursa hii kuambia nyinyi nyote tusimame ili tupate maombi sandeni sana basi na tuinamishe fichwa setu na tupate maombi baba na mungu wetu mumba mbingo na nji tumeinamisha vichwa setu tukikupa shukrani maana ulitupenda na bado unatupenda na bado utatupenda mfalme tunapoinamisha vichwa setu kwa masaa ya jioni hii tunaijua ya kwamba sabato tumekaribia mfalme Hebu utupokee kwa mikono yako miwili na utushindie unaporudisha ufalme wako awa wote wapate majina yao imeandikwa katika kitabu cha usima wa milele tunapoendelea na vipindi vingine we ndio kiongozi letu hadi dhamati mfalme haya ndio maombi yetu ikufikie unapoketi kwa kiti chako cha enzi kwa jina la baba na la mwana na la roho tumeomba na kuamini Asanteni. The Lord is good and all the time I am here to bring you good news. Just a recap of what Madam Einstein Finley has been talking about. She has been blessing us so much with health messages and among the many things that she's been talking about she has been reminding us uh, of how important air is that we need to consider how we breathe our air not only in the outside door but even in our bedrooms i remember one of the statements that she made and it struck me that in the many things that we do even as we live in the city there is need for us to to air our beddings i don't know how many of us do she made an emphasis on how important air is, that there is need for us to breathe open air. She actually said there is always great connection with God every time we take a moment outside just to take a walk. And one of the things that also struck me is the aspect of deep breathing. She said that deep breathing is actually medicinal. It is good to your soul, it's good to the mind how important it is for us to breathe. I don't know how many of us have actually been considering that important. And today, as she comes on board, she has very important messages for us. One of the things that she's told me she will be talking about is sleep, especially for those of us who live in Nairobi. How many times do you take to sleep the much that we should be in a position to sleep? as if that is not enough she says she's coming up front to remind us of how important it is to have sabbath rest amen well good evening and welcome again to our secrets to wellness and our secret tonight is probably no secret because i'm sure that you recognize that sleep is a very important thing to keep us well and even to get us well if we're sick. So tonight our message is on sleep and to be healthy we need restoring rest whether we are well or whether we are sick we need that restoring rest and refreshing and adequate sleep are two of God's aspects and they're his prescriptions for really good health so these are God's prescriptions for health and we all my friends benefit physically and mentally and socially even and spiritually from adequate rest and sleep but I wonder if we're getting enough sleep according to the National Institute of Health the average adult sleeps less than even seven hours per night. Well, let's find out why some people are not sleeping enough. Are you feeling tired? Are you feeling tired constantly? Well, 
many people are sleep deprived. And what are some of the causes of this sleep deprivation? Well, entertainment. People are up with entertainment. Television, internet, even overworking. And my friends, today, television, internet, smartphones even, social media, video games, and other digital technology devices ensnare many people into a hypnotic addiction to entertainment. Now, God is using these tech, this technology, and we have Hope Channel here spreading this gospel all over Africa and around the world and all the social media, but Satan is using this too. And in fact, even in some meetings and even in some churches, people have their smartphones out and they're following them because usually it's an addiction. So we want to use it for God's glory and that is so important for our wellness. And then it's a sedentary lifestyle and not enough exercise during the day are some of the reasons for that sleep debt. Oh, and here's another one, eating late at night. When people are eating late at night, that will actually deprive you of the rest that you need. In fact, the National Institute of Health, the National Library of Medicine said, sleep disorders affecting more than 5% of the world's population have emerged as important global pulp public health problems. And is this also true in Africa? Well, an emerging body of epidemiologic evidence supports that sleep disorders are highly prevalent among sub-Saharan Africans. So now even people in Africa are having sleep debt. And these sleep disorders, my friends, are important risk factors for even headaches, as well as many other adverse outcomes, and is another cause of some of these killer diseases. So let's look at some of the effects of sleep deprivation. Even our moods are affected. Our moods they may be up and down when we have sleep debt. And in a, irritability increases significantly. We don't have the patience. We're more irritable when we have. Have you ever noticed that? When you haven't gotten enough sleep, you seem to be a little more irritable. Well, and even our work performance decreases. So we're not as efficient at our work. And even our mental efficiency, general slowing of mental processes are going down when we don't get enough sleep. And our short-term memory is even affected. So many things are tied to sleep debt. And sleep deprivation actually decreases your endurance. I'm sure that those Kenyans who win the marathons and the races must be getting enough sleep. Sleep, sleep deprivation actually decreases our endurance and we want great endurance if we want great health and so everything we do my friends is affected by sleep debt our learning even our reasoning we're not as reasonable when we have sleep debt our safety especially if you're driving in the car and you begin to fa fall asleep and our efficiency, and our communication skills, and our relationships with one another. All of these things are so important, and, or, and we should be getting enough sleep. Well, let's talk about sleep and what scientists have uh, divided the different types of sleep into. So there's non-REM sleep. This is a light sleep at first. And then we go into a deep sleep. And then there's what we call REM sleep, or rapid eye movement, which is the dreaming stage of sleep. And when we first fall asleep, 
we're in that light non-REM sleep. And the body begins to relax. The heart rate and the breathing are slower. But the individual is actually easily awakened. Have you un ever wondered why when someone drops a book or they drop something and you jump in that early stage of sleep? It's because you're in that first non-REM sleep. And then we gradually transition into non-REM sleep, which is more of a deep sleep. And during this deep sleep, during this stage, the body renews itself and it actually repairs itself. That's why we need to get into that deep non-REM sleep. And the immune system is actually strengthened when we go into that deep sleep and it helps the body to fight against even infection. And so following deep non-REM sleep, we move into the REM sleep, rapid eye movement, when the dreaming uh, stage occurs. Now, if you're a dreamer, thank the Lord, because it is good to get into that dreaming stage of sleep. It is the REM sleep, the dreaming st stage, that actually benefits the mind the most. And so we want to get into that deep dreaming st sleep. And just as deep sleep restores the body, scientists believe that REM or dreaming sleep actually restores the mind. So what we do during our sleep, we actually restore not only the body, but the mind. And it's REM sleep that actually facilitates learning and memory. That's why it's good to read your Bible before you go to bed and memorize. My husband does that all the time, and he is memorizing. You wonder why he knows all these texts? He's memorizing, memorizing, and you remember them when you do that at night. And when we only sleep a few hours, there's really not enough time, my friends, to enter into that REM sleep, that last stage of sleep. So how can we find out whether we're totally rested? Well, those cycles, sleep cycles, actually last 90 minutes. Did you know that? Each cycle lasts about 90 minutes, and scientists tell us that we need five of those 90-minute cycles to be totally rested. So if you multiply five times 90, you will get 450, and you divide that by 60, 60 seconds, 60 uh, in, to be one hour, 60 minutes to be one hour, then you get seven and a half. So most people need seven and a half. Now I'm going to share with you there's a short, my, a small minority that could get along with a little less, but we need that amount of sleep because over time, continued sleep deprivation raises the risk for a number of those chronic health problems that we've been talking about, including obesity, including diabetes, high blood pressure, and even heart disease. You see how important, my friends, sleep is? Well, why is sleep so important? Because sleep is nature's wonderful restorer of health. It invigorates the tired, weary body, and it prepares for the next day's duties so that you can function properly. And studies have consistently shown that sleep plays a major, a vital role in promoting our physical health and even longevity. We've been talking how we can live longer, healthier, and happier, and we need sleep to do that, and it helps our emotional well-being as well. And so during sleep, both the body functions and the mental functions are restored. But insufficient sleep increases your risk even of developing type 2 diabetes. So why is diabetes on the rise? Because we're not following God's remedies for health. 
and studies by the journal Lancet, which is in the United Kingdom, revealed a sleep deficit of three to four hours a night over a course of a week affected the body's ability to process the carbohydrates leading into a pre-diabetic state. So you see how all these remedies are connected to even the lifestyle diseases? Well, sleep deprivation weakens the whole immune system, contributing to these diseases. And a host of conditions are associated with insomnia, including what diseases do you think? The chronic diseases we've been talking about, and fibromyalgia, and chronic pain syndrome, and even the autoimmune diseases that Dr. Chitty talked about, and hypertension, even obesity and depression. So sleep is very important because it restores our energy, replenishes our strength, relieves the stress that we have, revitalize the nerves, and even rebuilds the immune system. We've been talking about all those lifestyle diseases being reversed or cut down on the risk or even improving our immune system will help us to do that. So rest rejuvenates and rebuilds our entire body. It enables us to function, my friends, at optimum capacity. And sleep, best of all, guess what? It even slows down the aging process. So sleep is actually one of the best anti-agent secrets. So we need that rest. Well, the question is, how much rest do we need? A study was conducted to determine how much sleep is required, and there was a, mi a majority needed that seven and a half and maybe even eight for some, but the majority needed at least that seven and a half, and a minority who could get along on six and a half or seven and a half, and another minority actually needed eight and a half to nine. Well, how do you know, how do you know, my friends, which category you're in? Well, how do you know whether you need the seven and a half, the eight, or the eight and a half? Well, I'll tell you, it's a seek, not a secret anymore. If you're sleeping during the day, you're not getting enough sleep. Okay, if you're sleeping while you're studying and you have to keep putting your books down because you're falling asleep, you're not getting enough sleep. And if you're falling asleep when the professor is teaching in the classroom and you're falling asleep, you're not getting enough sleep. You have sleep debt. And if you're falling asleep during this meeting, you are not getting enough sleep. You're in sleep debt. So we should be fully rested, my friends. We should be fully rested when you wake up. You should be energetic. And that's how you know whether or not you've gotten enough sleep. So keep track. Keep track of how many hours you sleep and how you feel the next day because we should be like little children who play all day, go to school all day, and then they go to bed at night and they rest so peacefully and get up the next day and do it again. And they don't, uh, they don't fall asleep in the classroom or these things that many of us as adults do. So you want to be rested. So here's some suggestions for sleeping better. So for the best sleep, we need regular hours. We should be going to bed at the same time every single night. And before 12 is also very important because scientists tell us that the rest you get before midnight is even better than after, even up to almost double the amount. And so it's very important to go to bed on time and also to have a regular eating schedule, not one day eating at one time. We've been so blessed here because we uh, eat at a place where we're staying in the morning about 8 o'clock. We have at least five hours in between, and then they feed us a wonderful, wonderful main dinner here. And... So we have regular 
at, at about 1, 1 1.15 to 1.30, we have regular hours every day for eating. That's very important and have to have regular meals with nothing between. Because if you're eating in between, you start those digestive processes all over again. Not even an apple should be eaten in between our meals. We need to empty the stomach and you'll sleep more soundly. If your stomach is full and there's undigested food, it'll be difficult to have that good, sweet, sound sleep. And then avoid those stimulants that we talked about, such as caffeine and nicotine. In fact, Harvard Medical School says this in a special report. Caffeine, which is found in coffee, tea, sodas even, and other beverages, keeps you awake by blocking the adenosine, a brain chemical that helps you to fall asleep. So all these stimulants are not good for us and especially not when we're trying to sleep. For some people, Harvard says, a single cup of coffee in the morning means a sleepless night. And we want you to help, to help, we want to help you to sleep better. But if you are tired during the day, some studies have also shown that you should just take a relaxing 15 to 30 minute nap and then you'll be revived for the rest of the day until you can get on that good schedule and do um, regular sleeping hours. And so exercise da daily and you'll feel so much better. And do your work in the office, not in bed. Don't bring your computers and your iPhones and your iPads to bed with you. And then don't discuss problems at bedtime. I'm sure Dr. David would tell us that. You just say, you know what, I think we'll do much better in the morning. Let's not discuss that tonight. Let's wait till tomorrow. And then sleep in a dark, quiet room, my friends. And then that old saying, early to bed, and what? Early to rise makes a man or a woman healthy, wealthy, and wise. So getting to bed early and getting up early is important. And then trust in God, my friends, and pray. Trust in God and pray. A life of calm trust prepares the mind and body for a restful sleep. So here are the benefits of adequate sleep. It helps present, prevent disease. It reduces stress. It improves our memory. It increases our energy. It maintains even helps to maintain a healthful, healthy weight and it reduces depression, and it even slows the aging process. So there are many benefits. But besides a daily rest, we need to have a weekly rest. And God has given us the Sabbath. We need not only a daily rest, but every week. Our loving creator, my friends, has built into the structure of our being a biological time clock. We have a seven-day cycle, did you know that? Built into the very fabric of our beings. And this is why, my friends, our loving creator has given us the seventh-day Sabbath. The Sabbath provides an opportunity for restorative rest for both the mind and the body. And God's Sabbath is heaven's defense against unending work. Some people would work all the time if they didn't have the Sabbath, but we must come apart and worship God on that day. And so here are your teeny tips for tonight. Three habits to establish. A regular schedule for sleeping, a regular schedule for eating, and a regular schedule for exercising. Exercise even outdoors in the morning. That bright natural light can actually set your circadian rhythm. And then three things to avoid. Stimulants like nicotine or caffeine. And avoid taking work to bed with you, my friends. And avoid any conflicts or even anything that's controversial or even a complex subject or a discussion at night. Have it wait until the morning. 
and then get plenty of fresh air in your bedroom. Keep your sleeping room dark and quiet. And if you need to and you can't sleep, just try some herbal teas and then take a warm bath before going to bed. But certainly, my friends, we need to allow at least an hour before going to bed to unwind. That's why we shouldn't be on our iPhones or our iPads or any of these digital media devices. We should actually be, to be toning down and unwinding and then go to bed early, spend time reading the Bible and praying, and then trust in God, my friends, to take care of all your worries and all of your anxieties because he will do just that. God will give you, my friends, the ability to follow all of his laws of health. So here's my prescription for you today. Every day, my friends, choose to make your health a priority. You are responsible for your own health, nobody else. And so make your health a priority and follow all of these eight natural laws that we've been t talking about. You see, because each one is so important. The water that we drink, eight eight ounce glasses or two liters every day, water on the inside, water on the outside, exercising at least those 30 to even 60 minutes a day, and then love and trust in God, and then having a lifestyle of abstemiousness, abstaining from everything that is harmful and using wisely that which is good, and then nutrition, eating the right foods at the right time and the right amounts, and then our environment and s the air that we breathe. Go out in nature. Nature is God's medicine. And getting enough sunshine to get the vitamin D that we need. And then sleeping those seven and a half to eight hours every night. And I know, my friends, all across Africa, those of you who are watching tonight, I know that Jesus will help you because Philippians 4.13 says this, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Let's say that together. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Not just some things, my friends, but all things through Christ who strengthens me. So I know that God is going to bless you as you follow his laws of health because, my friends, God's way is always the best way. Safari ya mwendo wa imani Tena tu 
uwe na uhakika na tumaini Tusije kupoteza na fasia kule Tusafiri kwa makini ndugu zangu Katika safari ya mwendo kwa imani Tena tuwe na uhakika na tumaini Tusije kupoteza na fasia kule Tena tuwe na uhakika na tumaini 